Hello YouTube! Have you heard about the Aruba effect? Well, it's hit my family and me hard. And now, all we can think about is going back. Imagine stepping into a paradise so captivating you can't stop thinking about it once you're home. So sit back and get ready to be whisked away and experience the magic of Aruba. You'll understand why it holds a special place in our hearts and in the hearts of travelers from all around the world. Today's video is full of helpful tips divided into different chapters that cover everything from preparing for your trip, safety, fun activities, and the local culture. Whether you love exploring beaches, hidden caves, or discovering the city in its nightlife, we've got you covered. You can watch the whole video at once and then feel free to return to the chapters you're most interested about. To make your vacation planning easier, all links or website will be in the description below. Let us help you create memories in Aruba that you'll cherish forever. Aruba is an autonomous country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands. It's located about 50 miles or 80 kilometers northwest of Curaçao and 18 miles or 29 kilometers north of Venezuela. Arrival Aruba requires their ED card or embarkation disembarkation card to be filled out up to seven days before your arrival. It contains your info, passport number, hotel name, and reason for travel. Everyone, adults and kids needed to be able to board their plane. You can print it out or keep the digital form on your phone to present it at customs after you land. Here's an example of what your form should look like. Even though Aruba is a small island, finding the perfect spot for you and your family or travel companions can be hard to decide. Here are the best areas. For a lively vacation experience close to everything, Palm Beach has high-rise hotels, white sand beaches, fun water activities, shopping centers, restaurants, and nightclubs. Eagle Beach has low-rise hotels, a postcard perfect beach, and is more family friendly, yet you're just a few minutes by car from Palm Beach. Orania Stat has accommodation for all budgets, making it perfect for travelers that are looking for both beach relaxation and exploration. Also, downtown is a good choice for a budget stay because you can walk to restaurants, you can walk to shops, you save money on taxis or car rental. You can also opt for Savaneta in the southwest of the island. It's a 25 minute drive from Arikok National Park and 10 minutes from the Donkey Sanctuary. Some of the best snorkeling is at Manjel Halto Beach in Savaneta, which was my favorite beach in Aruba. Actually, when we go back, I would like to stay near Manjal Halto, be able to get up in the morning and have this whole beautiful beach to myself. That would be the ultimate dream come true. We'll talk more about this beach later in this video. Many Airbnb options are available on the island from cozy apartments to beautiful villas for a flexible alternative to traditional hotels. This way you enjoy a sense of local living but you have the freedom to cook your own food or wash your own clothes, or not if you don't want to. We stayed in Wayaka residence by the airport and rented an Airbnb with a pool. It was nice to be able to have a refreshing swim after a day of exploration, and the location was in the middle, not too far from Savaneta and my perfect beach, or the north where all the fun stuff is happening. You can buy a tourist SIM card which includes free calls and data. You will find booths selling these cards at the airport. We got a SIM card when we arrived and the price was $30 US for 7 days. The first time I visited Aruba was on a cruise with my friend and it was a dream come true. We took a jeep safari excursion with Easy Raider Aruba tours, went to the caves, the Conchi pool and Baby Beach and we had a blast. From that day on, I knew I had to return to Aruba with the whole family. If you'd like to watch the full video of this tour, link will be in the description. Budget The currency on the island is the florin, but using American money in Aruba is common. However, you may receive florins as change. Please note that the exchange rate is approximately 180 florin for one US dollar. Also, all major credit cards are accepted. If you experience great service, know that tipping is not mandatory but very much appreciated. Some restaurants and bars apply a service charge of 15% to group bills. This does not directly benefit servers because it's distributed among all staff and higher rank staff receive a larger share. So you can choose to tip your servers separately to show your appreciation. When is it cheaper to visit? Expect to pay top dollars for lodging dining experiences from December to April. Then from April to August, lodging rates tend to dip 20 to 30%. And then low season is from September to mid-December, which is usually the cheapest time to visit. Remember to set aside a bit of cash for souvenirs. It's a perfect way to bring a piece of your trip home with you. 
Plus, kids love this part of the trip. Not this one? This one is one for free. Transportation. It's important to note there's no Uber in Aruba. So here are other types of transportation. Renting a car is the perfect way to discover Aruba. Aruba drives on the right side of the road and roundabouts are common. Please note if visiting Arakak National Park, you may need to rent a 4x4 vehicle as regular rental cars are not allowed in the whole park. We'll talk about this some more later in this video. If you rented a car in advance online, your car rental location will surely be straight in front of the airport as you come out. Please note there's paid parking downtown and we paid for 1 hour, 1 dollar and 14 USD. Taxis in Aruba are safe and reliable. Their license plate is marked with the letter TX. They have fixed rate that should be checked in advance. The minimum fare is 1260 florins or 7 US dollars with a maximum of 5 passengers, excluding kids younger than 2. Sundays, holidays and nights from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. there's an extra charge of 3 dollars US. Aruba has a public bus network. The fare costs 2 dollars and 60 US but you can get a day pass for 10 dollars. I will link their website for departure times, maps, and bus fee information. If you love to ride with the wind in your hair, opt for a motorcycle, a scooter, or a bicycle. A few companies offer this type of rental. The free streetcar is a great way to navigate the main shopping and dining area. Some of them are double-deckers, you have an amazing view of the downtown area. It's also very practical for cruise passengers because it loops from the shopping areas to the cruise ship terminal. It starts running at 10 a.m. every 25 minutes and stops from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. for lunch. And the last trolley of the day leaves the cruise port at 5 p.m. You can explore Aruba without leaving a carbon footprint with eVikes, which is Aruba's first smart electric scooter. Download the app, it's $1 to start, and then 55 cents per minute after that. You can check their website for more information. Safety Aruba is one of the safest islands to visit in the Caribbean. It's a small island with little crime, but still do not leave your valuables out in the open at the beach or in your rental car just to be safe. All the rental cars in Aruba start with the letter V on the license plate, so it's easy to tell a visitor's car from a local's car. Don't forget to apply sunscreen, the sun in Aruba is strong even on cloudy days, and don't forget to stay hydrated. The Manchino tree is a highly toxic and dangerous tree found in tropical regions, including Aruba. You can find that tree in the Arakak National Park. It's often referred as the world's most dangerous tree because it produces toxic sap that can cause severe skin irritation, blistering, and even chemical burns. When it rains, the toxic sap can be washed from the leaves, branches, and trunk of the tree, so don't stand under a manchineal tree during rain. They're usually marked with a red band and a dangerous sign. Aruba has delicious water due to its water treatment system, and the water quality meets international standards. We bring our reusable water bottles, fill them with ice and tap water, and it's the best water I've ever tasted. I was sad to be back in Montreal where the water tastes not as good. Here's a funny story. Our first day in Aruba, we were left without a car due to a problem in a thrifty rental car system. We took a taxi to our house, but we ended up having to walk to the nearest food truck and grocery store. We were surprised, but there's dogs without a leash protecting their properties in Aruba, so it was a little scary for the kids and for me. So if a dog barks at you, it's warning you to stay away from its territory. You keep calm, you maintain a distance, you walk past slowly, and it's much less likely to chase you. By the way, we made it alive. We had the most amazing tacos at Tacos Pepe Nachos. And the next day, we had the pleasure to rent a car at this company, check them out, and ask for Mr. Raul. There are lots of stray dogs and cats in Aruba. As a tourist, you can contribute by donating to the Foundation's websites. We will put the links in the description below. Make sure to bring good water shoes, we bring Crocs. The beaches in Aruba are beautiful but many are rocky and a good pair of water shoes will make the experience a lot more enjoyable. Weather Aruba is always sunny and 85 degrees or 30 Celsius year round. Out of all the islands in the Caribbean, Aruba consistently ranks as having the least amount of rainfall, averaging about 15 inches for the entire year. The air is muggy, but the wind tempers the heat. Aruba is outside the hurricane belt, so the island experiences a lower risk of direct hits by the hurricanes or tropical storms compared to many other Caribbean destinations. The amazing thing about dry weather is if you have an old sport injury, like me, you'll feel like a new person because less humidity, 
means less pain. It also means less insects. My youngest and I usually get 30 to 50 bites per vacation. Mosquitoes just love us. But for the first time during a vacation, none of us got bitten. Beaches. If beach relaxation is what you're looking for, you're on the right island. Here are our favorites. Manja Halto, the most beautiful beach in my opinion. The colors are amazing. Do not miss this beach. It's also a very great snorkeling spot. If you're enjoying this video, please do these three things. Click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Arashi Beach. Located on the northwestern tip of Aruba near the California Lighthouse, it's a bit more secluded than some of the other island's busier beaches. Baby Beach. If you've watched our cruise excursion video, you know we met a friendly local who was feeding the fish. To this day, this beach was my best snorkeling experience. We tried to relive this experience and yes, we saw tons of huge and colorful fish. Plus, Baby Beach has good amenities including snack stands, a bar, rental facilities for beach chairs and snorkeling gear. There's also public restrooms and showers available. So my birthday guys! Oh, Happy big birthday! Fish can feed you all. Well, Kayla's screaming. I think she saw fish. Let's see. Did you see them? That's crazy. Hold on. Tres Trapi. Perfect to snorkel with turtles and spot some starfish. Come in early and bring some water shoes. Palm Beach was not our favorite, but it was fun for people watching and the atmosphere was great. Eagle Beach. It's named Best Beach in Aruba, has long stretch of white soft sand, it's perfect for families and this is where you'll find the famous DV tree and amazing sunsets. Eats. If you love fresh coconut water as much as we do, you will find a few people selling them on the side of the road. 
We saw some at the California Lighthouse. There's also Chino, the coconut man in front of the red anchor near Baby Beach, and a more upscale spot near Eagle Beach called Coco Paradise. The food trucks can be found all over the island and are open from early evening to late into the night. Here are some that we tried and loved. As previously mentioned, Tacos Pepe Nacho, those tacos were amazing. Minion Burgers and Grill, my favorite, love their yuca. Shallow Burger. Happy Stop. Okay guys, did you know that I lived in Dominican Republic in my 20s for a few years? So when I saw Dominicana Juana, I had to stop for some Dominican food. I also learned that 4.1% of Aruba's population is Dominican. And finally, Sabor Tropical, where we tasted our first patacón, which is a sandwich made with plantains, stuffed with meat and cheese, and lots of toppings. And don't forget to try one of Aruba's local beers, Chill, Balashi, or Magic Mango. We wanted to try the Pastichi house, but both times we tried it was closed due to holidays. So we decided to follow the advice of a YouTuber from Aruba we love, let's go with Hyro, and we tried Tanky Flip Snack, and they were so good. Thank you Mr. Hyro. Go check him out, he has so many videos on Aruba. The Gelatissimo bus is a trendy and upscale spot Famous for its more than 30 mouth-watering gelato flavors made with the finest ingredients and no additives or artificial ingredients. Plus, you can choose to eat your treat on the second floor of the bus where there are tables and chairs and an amazing view of the lively Palm Beach zone. If you need to cool off on a hot day at Baby Beach, stop by the food trucks. We got all natural fruit snow cones and it was delicious. It was my daughter's birthday and she was dreaming of an Eduardo acai bowl. They have a location on the beach which is very popular but we opted for the restaurant in Nord. You'll find several supermarkets where you can do your grocery shopping. If you're renting an Airbnb and planning to cook on your own, you should be able to find most of the items that you're accustomed to. Our favorite was Superfood. The supermarket also has a restaurant that sells cheap but delicious meals. It's called Jack's Cafe Aruba. Activities For a 360 degree view of the island, climb to the top of the California Lighthouse. This famous lighthouse was named after the SS California boat that sunk in 1910. It's open every day from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and it costs $5 per person, kids or adults. There's also a food truck for a refreshment or a snack. Want to connect with nature, get some exercise and enjoy some of the best panoramic views that Aruba has to offer? Well, you can hike the 600 steps to the top of Mount Hoiberg. Hoiberg is a cone-shaped mountain that rises 540 feet from the center of Aruba. Just be sure to wear comfortable shoes, bring plenty of water because there's no facilities. There's also many resting spots for you to take a breather during your climb. 
Guess what? As you climb, you may spot wild goats. We did. It was so exciting. The best times to go is early morning to see the sunrise or late afternoon to see the sunset. Renaissance Island has a famous private beach with pink flamingos for guests of their hotel. A complimentary water taxi leaves every 15 minutes to and from the island. But if you're not a guest, Saturdays at 9 a.m. day passes are sold on their website on a first come first serve basis for the next week. Note kids are allowed on Flamingo Beach from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. only. Outside these times, kids can enjoy Iguana Beach. Cost for a day pass starts at $130 US per person, children 6 to 12 are around $60 and 0 to 5 are free. It includes a food and beverage credit of $25. We tried to get tickets but weren't successful. We were a family of six and there was a maximum of five tickets per purchase. By the time we figured it out, nothing was available anymore. Maybe next time! Aruba has a dedicated spot on the side of the road next to the airport runway where you can check out the airplanes land and fly off. There are picnic tables where you can sit in the shade and plenty of parking spots. If you're up for a little adventure, join an off-road tour to explore the island's rugged side. These tours take you through Aruba's beautiful natural landscapes that are typically inaccessible by regular car. Don't miss visiting the Aruba Ostrich Farm. It's a great opportunity to get up close with the largest birds on earth. The tour costs 14 USD per adult and 7 for children and run from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day. You can also grab a bite at their restaurant. When visiting the Kwadidikidi cave located in the Arikok National Park, we were able to capture the famous heart-shaped opening in the cave. We also went to Fontaine Cave with its petroglyphs, which are ancient rock drawings made by the indigenous people of the region, the Arawaks. You'll definitely want to see the Divi trees. These unique trees are shaped by the constant trade winds and are one of Aruba's most iconic sites. They make for stunning photographs, especially at sunset. Speaking of sunsets, Aruba's sunsets are truly breathtaking. One of the most beautiful sunsets I've seen was at Manjal Halto. Another incredible natural spot is the Conchi Natural Pool. Enclosed by a rugged rock formation, this secluded pool offers a refreshing swim. It's accessible by foot, on horseback, or 4x4, and it's an experience you won't forget. Ride a colorful party bus for a fun night out. Stopping at the best bars off the beaten track with your local guide. Link in description. For a fun filled day, consider a trip to the Palm Island. This private island offers an all-inclusive experience with snorkeling, water slides, unlimited banana boat tours, food and drinks, and there's even a few flamingos. Relax on the beach, get a massage, your hair braided, or you can go snorkeling. going on the water slide the highest one because we're just cool like that okay
Don't forget to take a moment to snap a picture next to the iconic anchor. Located near Baby Beach, this anchor has become a popular photo spot for visitors. It's perfectly positioned against the stunning beach views. And while exploring, don't forget to stop by the Eagle Beach roundabout to snap a picture with the sea turtle statue. A visit to the butterfly farm is a great place to admire different butterflies. The admission price is $19 for adults, $16 for students, and $10 for kids. Check out their website for more info. The Renaissance Marketplace is an outdoor shopping center where you can have unique culinary and cultural experiences. You'll find restaurants, an arcade, a movie theater, a casino, and much more. Palm Beach lights up at night with a variety of activities and entertainment options that cater to all tastes. Here are some popular nighttime activities you can enjoy. Dining out, nightclubs, bars, hotel casinos, beach walks, shopping, and live shows. Don't forget to capture a photo next to one of the iconic Aruba signs, perfect for sharing your island adventure with friends and family on your social media. The Aloe Museum is perfect to learn about the history and production of aloe vera, one of Aruba's most important exports. The guided tour is free of charge, it's given all day until 4.30 p.m. except on Sundays when the tours stop at 12.30 p.m. You can also tour the museum on your own. Please check their website for more info. The beautiful Aracoc National Park makes almost 20% of the island. At this park you can enjoy gorgeous views of Aruba's rugged terrain, desert-like hills filled with tall cacti, a breathtaking coastline and protected native flora and fauna. This is where you'll find the caves and Conchi natural pool we talked about earlier. Please note it's necessary to rent a 4x4 jeep or SUV if you're planning to access the natural pool within the park. A day pass is 20 USD per adult and free for kids. The natural bridge is a stunning rock formation created by the force of the ocean. Aruba once had two natural bridges, but the larger one collapsed in 2005 due to natural erosion, leaving only the smaller baby bridge still standing. Here you will find facilities such as a snack bar and a souvenir shop. The Bushiribana ruins are the remains of an old building where people once processed gold. It was built in 1872 during a gold rush in Aruba and now it's a historical landmark, offering visitors a glimpse into Aruba's rich mining history and the chance to take amazing pictures. Near the Bushiribana ruins, there's a hidden spot called the Secret Pool. It's a pool in a cave protected from the ocean where you can cliff jump. It's stuck away in a cave just a short walk from the ruins and you will have to climb down a steep wooden ladder to get there. It's usually a peaceful place for a refreshing swim when there's no tours, but we came at the same time as a huge group. We had an amazing time anyway, and I have to admit it was a little comforting to have people around for our first time trying to jump. Thank you. 
For animal lovers, a visit to the donkey sanctuary is a must. Here you can help care for rescued donkeys which have been part of Aruba's landscape for centuries. It's a rewarding experience that helps support the sanctuary's efforts to provide a safe haven for these beautiful animals. When visiting the donkey sanctuary, there is no admission fee, but donations are very welcome. The donkeys love apples and carrots, so feel free to bring some when you're planning to visit. You can also buy food to feed them on site. Culture Aruba's population is a blend of various ethnicities, including African, European, indigenous, and other ethnicities. This diversity has contributed to a vibrant and unique cultural identity. San Nicolas started as a quiet fishing village and became an industrial hub when a major oil refinery opened in 1924. After it shut down in the 1980s, people moved out to look for work and some business struggled. This led to efforts to bring life back to the town. The street murals in San Nicolas are part of that initiative, with local and international artists painting these murals that celebrate the Aruban heritage and the diverse cultures of its residents. Papiamento is the native language of Aruba, a Creole language that developed from Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch and African languages. Spanish, English and Dutch are also spoken. Fun fact, in Aruba students must become proficient in those four main languages before graduating from high school. Aruba's architecture wonderfully blends Dutch colonial designs with modern Caribbean styles. As you explore the island, you'll enjoy the vibrant house colors in Oranjestad. The Aruba Carnival starts in November, but the best time to experience it is in January and February when the whole island turns into a colorful celebration of friendly street parades. The Bonbini Festival happens every Tuesday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at Fort Zutman. It's a celebration of the Aruban culture with music, dance, local crafts and food. Bonbini means welcome in Papiamento and this festival truly shows the warm, welcoming nature of the island. The Soul Beach Music Festival happens every Memorial Day weekend in Aruba, where renowned international artists perform soul, jazz and R&B music on the beach, drawing big crowds and lively nights. The Alto Vista Chapel is Aruba's first church, known for its bright yellow walls and beautiful hilltop location overlooking the North Shore. Come early morning to be able to watch a beautiful sunrise. Did you know all the warmth and happiness you soak up in Aruba goes home with you? Your trip will end, but that feeling won't. And this is what I was talking about in the beginning. The locals call it the Aruba effect. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon and until then, happy travels.